Good evening. Close to 20,000 football fans have joined together at Adelaide Oval in a stunning show of respect for murdered Crows coach Phil Walsh. Supporters standing as one, first in silence and then as the siren sounded for what should have been Adelaide's clash with Geelong. They were to have come to the Adelaide Oval to watch their beloved Crows, Phil Walsh, at the helm. A clash with the Cats that was shaping up as make or break. Instead it was their hearts breaking as they arrived to honour the club's slain coach. It's just the entire AFL feels this. And you can see it today. You can see today, I mean, like the way that everyone's feeling and the way that everyone's come out for him to say goodbye. A shrine to Phil Walsh growing outside the grounds. I think he just touched the whole football club and, and uh, he was going places for us and, and um, oh, I don't know, I'm just uh, touched by it all. The crowds made their way inside, taking their place and their chance to honour a legend of the game. All stood for a minute's silence. Then at precisely 2.50pm, when the Crows clash with the Cats should have begun, the siren sounded. <laughs> and instead of one bull being bounced, there were many. Mourners, supporters, families taking a moment to reflect on a great loss, as well as enjoy the game Phil Walsh had dedicated his life to. The kids probably know what's going on and we just made sure we look after them and um, everyone's just looking after each other and you know we feel for the family. I love my club. It's been a gut-wrenching couple of days. There was no score on the board, instead an image of the man this was all about. This moment a mark of great respect. And a win for football, two days after such a terrible loss. And Jared Brevy is live at Adelaide Oval. Jared, any word yet on an official memorial service? Will, today was a relatively impromptu tribute, but its magnitude certainly exceeded many expectations. At this stage, there is no confirmation on any sort of public memorial service, but we do expect to hear more on that in the coming few days. We also understand that there may be a private funeral for Phil Welsh, possibly held in his home state of Victoria in his hometown. As for tonight, though, there still remains a steady stream of people trickling in here to the Adelaide Oval precinct to pay their respects. As you can probably see, Will, behind me, the shrine that's been set up here is also growing significantly. It sure is. Thanks very much, Jared. The Adelaide Football Club is poised to appoint an interim coach to guide the club through the remainder of the season. Reporter Eddie Godfrey is live at West Lakes and Eddie, is there any idea yet on the announcements? It's understood that will take place tomorrow, Will. There'll be a meeting here at the club and the players will be the first to learn who that interim coach will be over the coming weeks and potentially months. The most likely candidate is Scott Camparelli. He's been an assistant coach with the club for several years, but this is a very complex situation for the club to work through. And it's a very difficult role for anyone to step into, particularly as the club here mourns this tragic loss and so do the many South Australians who've paid tribute here over the past few days. This was supposed to be game day for Crow supporters. Instead, it's been a day of grieving. And mainly feel for his wife and daughter and the boys, the players. I don't know how they're going to cope. <laughs> Tammy and Ashley Haylock travelled from Ardrossan to pay their respects. The memorial was amazing to get everyone out here and be able to show that we were, he was a loved man and he still will be forever. They're among thousands of mourners who've attended the club's Westlake's headquarters over the past three days. The main entrance is now swamped with personal tributes to Phil Walsh. It touches everybody, I think, um, whether it's football or not, just from a family point of view. We just wanted to um, come down and, and uh, show um, our gratitude to to the, uh, the time that he has spent with us. Some of the younger supporters know something's wrong but won't fully understand how tragic this is until they're older. How come you've come down here today? To give my present. From the club's newest supporters to one of its oldest, Diane Middleton is 91 years old. We've been here 25 years and we've finished now. The first game, they gave us a car park for the first game. 
Moving tributes too from some of Walsh's former players who had remained close with their one-time mentor. He's just a, a great person to be around, I think. Um, you know, you're a better person having known him and, and been around him. Just trying to remember um, the good memories that you've got and the great times that we shared. Somehow the Crows must now try and prepare for what's sure to be the toughest match in the club's 25 year history. They have to just get back out there, it's what Phil Wood wanted was getting back out there, start preparing for the next game. Now the club is yet to specify exactly when the players will return to the training track and as difficult as that will be, they'll be wanting to do that sooner rather than later because they've got that game next Saturday night against West Coast over in Perth, Will. Yeah, thanks very much Eddie Godfrey there at Westlakes.